Hey y'all, Kay here with Crafting Cousins. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much. Today, I have four new crafts for you, two big ones. And in the end, I have two small ones and I'm going to have a porch makeover. You can see all the things that I have put out for April and May on my porch. I'm going to be using a lot of the things I have made in previous videos as well. So stick around if you want to see my porch be youthful makeover. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using a 12 inch wood round. I think I ordered mine on Amazon. I'm going to be using one of these napkins from the Dollar Tree that looks like a big slice of watermelon. They are back in the party section. I will be using this wooden word, hello, I got mine at Walmart. I'm going to be using three wired ribbons to make a bow. The first one came from Aldi at Christmas, the second one came from Hobby Lobby at Christmas, and this last one is sold at Hobby Lobby right now. I will be using some acrylic paint in the colors Shamrock and Citrus and some chalk paint in the color white by Waverly. And finally, my hot glue gun, some Mod Podge, and a zip tie. The first thing we're going to do is give our piece a really good coat of the white Waverly chalk paint. You want to get all of the front, and I went ahead and did the edges as well. You want to make sure that anytime you're decoupaging napkins that you separate your napkins down to one ply. I'm going to use that old trick with tape and you just place a little tape on there and it easily pulls off the backing. This napkin was only two ply. Sometimes you'll have three or four. Because this napkin has a lot of wrinkles in it, I'm going to go ahead and iron it first and get as much of those out as I can. I'm going to be applying one coat of Mod Podge on the top of the wood round. Then I will let that dry, come in in the opposite direction, and apply a second coat of Mod Podge onto the wood round. Now that it is completely dry, I'm going to lay it down onto the wood round and kind of decide how I want it to hang off because it's a little bit larger than the wood round. Then I'm going to come in with my iron and I'm going to iron on this napkin. It will reactivate that Mod Podge and stick it right down to our wood round. I kid you not, this is the best way to apply it and not have so many wrinkles. For the wooden work, hello, I'm going to paint it in this shamrock acrylic paint. This is a bright green. I'm also going to be painting those edges and inside all those little nooks and crannies. Then we'll set this aside and let it dry completely. I let my wood round dry overnight so that it was nice and crisp. And then I'm just going to come in with Mod Podge and give it a coat on top. And it did end up wrinkling, but I fixed that later and I will show you how I did that. To remove this excess napkin at the side, I'm just going to come in with some sandpaper and just lightly sand it. Make sure you're going in a downward direction each time. And it takes a little effort, but it does get everything completely off. Now I'm going to fix those wrinkles. I'm going to take this Teflon sheeting. I ordered mine on Amazon a long time ago and use my iron. It will reactivate that glue just enough so that you can get out every bit of those wrinkles that you want to. Now I'm going to come in with some acrylic paint in the color citrus, and I'm just going to paint a margin all the way around this sign. I didn't try and make it perfect, I just went with it. And it did take two coats for really complete coverage. I'm going to use super glue fix all adhesive that I got from the Dollar Tree on the back of the word hello. I use a popsicle stick to spread it out and keep it pretty flat. Then we'll apply it to our board. I'm going to place it on the bottom half of the board. I'm going to cover up that one little white spot in the middle. And then once I get it placed on and lined up, I'm going to put a heavy book on top and let that dry for a couple of hours. I'm going to be using a size two round brush for the next part of this project. And I start out what is going to be the top. I know that this area is going to be hidden by the bow so I can practice. And I go in and start making some stripes for the watermelon. Through this process, I figured out that they needed to be further apart and that I need to try and vary them as much as possible. Now mine aren't perfect and I suppose that is part of the process. They're supposed to be whimsical, but I think even after I finished mine, I need to go back and practice this technique 
just a little bit more. So I will be keeping this one for myself. I won't be selling it, but I did learn a lot through the process. Mainly, you just have to go back and recheck what you're doing, widen it in certain spots. You want it to look as much like the stripes on a watermelon as you can. Now to make a bow for the piece, I'm first of all going to stack my first two ribbons, the red and white and the black and white on top of each other. Then we'll place the ribbon tails one on top of each other and then bring it over to our easy bow maker and I'm going to make four inch tails and I will be making three and a half to three and three quarter inch loops. First I'll do a tail down and a loop down and then we'll do a loop up and a tail up and then we'll cut our tail at four inches. For the watermelon ribbon, I'm going to keep it at four inch tails and I'm going to be doing three inch loops and we'll do first of all a tail up and a loop up, then we'll do a loop down and a tail down. I'm going to be using a zip tie and I'll come up under all of my ribbon and start tightening it before I even take it out of the bow maker. Then we'll remove it from the bow maker, turn it on the back and cinch everything tight. Once we do that, I'm just going to use scissors and cut off the excess. And then of course we need to fluff our bow. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to separate the red and the black ribbons from each other, pull the watermelon ribbon around. Every bow needs a lot of fluffing. We also need to adjust the ends. Some of them were a little long, so I cut them off. And also I dovetailed those ends that needed to be dovetailed. To make a hanger for the piece, I'm just going to use a soda can tab. I will bend it in the center. I mark the center on the back of my sign. We're going to turn that over, use hot glue, and place it down onto the board. Once the first glue sets up, I do add extra glue around the edges, and I've never had any problems with mine coming apart. The only thing left to do is add glue here at the top, cover up some of the mess I made, and place on our bow. Hey friends, thanks for stopping by. Don't miss our latest videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using an 18 inch grapevine wreath. I got mine at Joann's when they were on sale three for $10. I wish I could find that sale again. I'm also going to be using this Fresh Flower Market sign. Mine came from the Dollar Tree, but I saw some just like it at Target. This floral bunch, which I got at a store called Ollie's, it was less than $5, including tax for this entire bunch. This is the easiest way to use florals when you don't have a good sense of putting them together. You just buy a bunch that's already complementary of each other. I'm going to be using some wired ribbon, all four or one and a half inch. The first one came from craftoutlet.com. The second one came from Michael's. The third came from Hobby Lobby. And the last one came from Sam's Club. I'm going to be using some cable tie mounts. I got mine just recently from Amazon and they were very inexpensive. And finally, some chenille stems and some hot glue. I'm going to be using my Pro Bow the Hand to make a bow. I thought it was time I pulled this thing back out. I have five pegs set up on the C row, and that means we will be making a 20 inch loop bow, and it will be a very full integrated bow. I am using two of the three pegs on my spool holder, and we're just going to stack those ribbons two on top of each other. And you just want to pull those ribbons around and stack one on top of the other. I like to stack the ones that are shiny on top of the more matte finish and that keeps things from moving around so much when you're making your loops. Then I'm going to come back about three inches from the edge, maybe a little more. Then we'll take a piece of heavy duty floral wire. I'm using covered floral wire and I'm going to give it two hard twists right around the part where we pinched everything together. Then we'll bring our ribbon towards our thumb here at the bottom. It is Pro Bow the hand after all, so I call the bottom the thumb and the top our fingers. And I'm going to wrap it around to the left of the thumb and right towards the middle top and pull it down around to the middle of our thumb. And then I'm going to give it a couple of hard twists and we'll tuck in that tail. 
For our excess wire, we're going to take the top part and go straight up, wrap it around the top part of the thumb or that home post. And then for the second wire, we'll take it, pull it straight down to the bottom and we'll attach it to the nail, loop it around just one time and then poke it under the bottom of the probo the hand. Then we'll bring our ribbons back towards the home peg in the center. You're never placing it towards the top or the bottom. And we're going to do a hard half twist. And then we will move to the right. But each time I did have to straighten my ribbons to make sure they're in the same order and that the correct side is out. You are always doing the ribbon with the right sides towards the outside of the pegs. And each time we wrap that ribbon around first to the right, and then we'll move to the left. Every time you bring it down to your home peg, make sure everything's stacked on top of each other in the correct form, but you want to bring it to the middle of that peg and do a half turn. You're not really doing a whole turn with this ribbon, but come to the home peg every time and you keep alternating side to side until you have all five sets of ribbon put on, all five loops. Now, can you use all of those loops? You absolutely can, but the more you use, the bigger the bow is going to get. Once all five pegs are covered, I'm going to bring it down to the home peg and I'm going to hold it with my left thumb and I'm going to undo my heavy duty floral wire. We'll give it two hard twists to kind of hold everything in place. And then I sort of pull up my ribbons and I'm going to look. The purple one ran out in just the perfect spot. It was the shorter one and that's okay. That's perfect for us to cut off the length of all of our ribbons so that we can make the tails for this bow because you make the tails at the end. Now I can take the ends of my ribbon and bring them up to the floral wire, tuck in the tails and give it two hard twists and we'll have our ribbon mounted in. All we have to do now once we have our big loop is to come and cut with our scissors in the middle of the loop. And that gives us all of our tails for our bow. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and dovetail all of the ends of the ribbon. That means you fold them in half and you cut diagonally towards the wire. And at this point, we want to pull out our pegs and remove our loops of ribbon. You could also probably pull them off the top. It's according to how tight you twisted them. Then I'm going to take my bow and attach it down to my fluffing box. This is just a board with a screw eye in the middle. You attach it with the wire where you've made the bow. And once you do that, you just start fluffing your bow. You can fluff from right to left. You can start in the center. You just want to pull those loops out in different order if you can. This is a very integrated bow and I try to keep as many of the colors from touching as I can. Before I started, I trimmed out a little bit of that tail that was in the very center. But honestly, all these loops are going to hide any of those imperfections. Then we'll just remove it from our fluffing box and our bow is complete. A very full integrated bow and all of the colors match with the florals in the piece that we're going to be using. To attach the sign to the wreath, I'm going to be taking a couple of these sticky back cable tie mounts and then we'll just peel off the backing. We'll use a little hot glue to reinforce the sticky factor and we'll place one on each side in the middle. Then I just used a couple of chenille stems. You want to place them through the little slots on the back of the cable tie mounts. Twist them a couple of times really tightly and that's how we're going to attach it to the wreath. And I'm just going to cut off this hanger on the back that came on this sign. It helps if you have wire cutters to cut your florals. I'm going to be preparing my florals by pushing the leaves towards the bloom. And I'm going to cut mine at about four inches long, sometimes three inches. And I did have to trim them later a little bit. I just want to give myself a little extra so that when I place them down into this grapevine wreath, they have lots of room to hold. For the cost, I thought these flowers were a great bargain. You get three huge flowers of each one. I ended up using two of each. Now, grapevine wreaths are never perfectly symmetrical. So you want to kind of turn it around and figure out where you want to put your bow. I'm going to put mine in the thinnest part and that's going to be the top part of my wreath because my bow is going to hide a lot of that area that's not as thick as the rest of the wreath. Then I'm just going to use that heavy duty floral wire on the back of the bow to attach it right there in the skinny part of the wreath. 
you want to work it down around several of those branches so that you can pull it over on the back and twist it tight. I also use the excess part of my floral wire to make the hanger for the piece. I just twisted it into a circle so that I could easily hang it onto a wreath holder. And of course, we're going to reinforce that with a little bit of hot glue on the back as well. And at this point, we want to go ahead and place our sign on. You can place it in the center. You can place it towards the bottom. I did it somewhere in between. You're just going to work those chenille stems down over several pieces of the grapevine wreath, turn it towards the back, and secure it. I again added hot glue on the back of the chenille stems and then I just cut off the excess and with that this part of the wreath is done. All we have left are our florals. Usually I do my florals sort of symmetrical and do the same thing on the right and the left. For this one I decided it was such a riot of color I'm going to vary the order that I put my florals in and I'm going to be placing four different ones on the right and the left. You may notice I am also using my glue pot and I sort of bent the florals so that the heads will pop out from the wreath. I tell y'all all the time, I'm not a florist, I'm just a crafter, and I know what I like, so I like poking posies sometimes. And if you don't like the simplicity of the big flowers on each side, you can also add some type of greenery, whether it be boxwood or eucalyptus, and you can fill in even further. I just wanted mine to be a riot of color to welcome summer, because I think these darker colors scream summer. love for you to take a moment and let us know what you think because your comments fuel our creativity. Hey y'all, it's Kay. It's time for a porch reset. I'm going to take my stone sign that was red for Valentine's Day and we're going to flip it on the back side and change it for the new season. We need to start out by making a bow. I'm going to be using six inch tails and at first I start out with three and a half inch loops on each side. I'm going to start with this black and white check ribbon and I'm going to have two loops on each side. First ribbon was two and a half inches wide but the next two ribbons are one and a half inches wide and I'm going to place them both on the spool at the same time. Stack them one on top of the other and I'm going to once again make six inch tails and three and a half inch loops. I'm just doing one set of loops on each side and then we'll cut off our tail again at six inches. For the final ribbon, I'm going to use this two and a half inch ribbon that has bees on it. It came from Sam's Club and I'm going to do about a six inch tail and a three inch loop on each side. I'm going to use a zip tie and place it under all of my loops of ribbon. I'll, I will begin tightening it while it is still on the bow maker. Then we'll take it out of the bow maker, turn it on to the back. And before we pull it completely tight, I'm going to place in a chenille stem and then tighten down upon it. And then of course, we'll turn it on to the back. We'll snip off that excess zip tie. And then we're going to turn it over onto the front and you need to fluff everything. I'm going to trim up the ends, adjust the lengths, fold them in half and cut them at an angle to dovetail them. You want to pull those loops of ribbon out from between each other, the two one and a half inch ribbons, and you just adjust everything to get it like you want. Cable tie mounts are wonderful things for hanging objects that need to have a chenille stem attached. So I'm going to take the chenille stem and go ahead and pre-place it into the side of the cable tie mount, give it a couple of hard twists, and I will actually attach it once I get out to the sign on the porch. Y'all, I think this was the best put together sign I've ever bought at the Dollar Tree. It was so difficult to remove it from the stick. I had to pry it loose. I had to cut it with wire cutters. It took a lot of effort, but finally that thing did come off. And it did cause a little damage on the front, so I'm going to use one of these wooden bees that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to place a little glue on the bag and place it down right over that spot on the front. After that, it looked really cute and I had no problem with it. For the backing, I will peel it off once I get outside. And I'm going to put this cable tie mount right in the center here of the bee. And that will be how I place it onto the sign. The sign has a screw eye and I'll just wire it onto that. 
Welcome aboard the Crafty Cruise Getaway, where creativity sets sail once again. Join us on Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas, sailing out of the port of Galveston, Texas. Prepare to be dazzled as we stop in Costa Maya and in Cozumel. Just like our maiden voyage, we will host exclusive crafting workshops on sea days. We have some amazing projects lined up for you that guarantee something for everyone to enjoy. For the Crafty Cruise Getaway 2025, we're introducing our newest sponsor, We Create. Elevate your crafting with the state-of-the-art laser engraver and cutter, valued at over $1,500. We are thrilled to give away one of these amazing lasers as a door prize to one lucky participant. Mark your calendars for February 17th through the 22nd and join us on the Crafty Cruise Getaway for creativity, relaxation, and lasting memories. To book your spot, visit www.craftycruise.com getaway.com see you on board in 2025 on my porch i have a cute little welcome bench and i love to have pillows on it but pillows are so expensive so i'm going to be making my own i'm going to use this black and white check fabric and this bee fabric that i got from hobby lobby my idea is to make these versatile so that i can reuse the black and white anytime that i'm using my black and white porch sign and just change out the color that will go down the middle of that fabric i cut a piece of my fabric off at 12 and a half inches wide and then i'm going to cut it again on that fold that's in the middle of the piece of fabric. When you buy fabric, this fabric is 45 inches wide, so I'm going to cut that width in half, which will be 11, and by the time I sew my pillow, my pillow comes out to about 11 by 12 or so. Then I'm going to fold that fabric in half each piece. Then I will come in and I'm going to stitch down the sides, and then I will stitch across and leave a pocket at the bottom part. Now I took mine to the sewing machine and I did sew them around those edges I showed you. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can always use hemming tape to seal them or you could also use hot glue. And now you can see that I have the opening at the bottom. I'm going to turn them right side out. Then I will take my iron and press all of the seams. And at this point, we need to stuff our pillows with something. You can use pillow stuffing from an old pillow that you have at home, but I'm going to use my plastic grocery sacks that I have, and I'm going to recycle them. It will give it a little bit of waterproofness, so to speak, because it is on my porch. You could also spray some kind of coating on the outside of the pillows to further make them waterproof. I stuffed about 30 of these sacks into each pillow. And once you get it like you want it and it's stuffed real well, then what you want to do is, well, you could go to the sewing machine and re-sew it, but I'm just going to use hot glue to seal those ends of my pillows. This is a rotary cutter for fabric, and it cuts easily six and a half inches wide. You don't have to figure out any measurements in between. You just slide that rotary cutter over. You do need some kind of mat underneath, and I'm going to cut two pieces at six and a half inches wide. Then I'm going to take the fabric strips that I cut, and I'm going to fold them in half and also pin them so that I can make a seam across the edge. I make about a half inch seam, maybe three eighths of an inch, all the way down the side. Then we're just going to take out the pins, and then I will press the edges. The next thing you need to do is turn it inside out. I'm just using a wooden dowel and I scrunch my fabric down onto it so that I can flip it inside out. Then you want to fold it to where the seam is in the back, in the middle, and then press it really well with an iron. Then I'm just going to fold in one end of the raw edges and press that down a little bit and then I'm going to seal it with some hot glue, only one end at this point. Then I'm just going to cut off a couple of pieces of sticky back Velcro, the width of the fabric, and then I'm going to use some glue and glue it down one half on the inside part of what I'm calling a pillow bra. Then I'm just going to fold it around the pillow so that I can see how long I need the piece actually to be, and then I will just cut it off a little longer than I need it. And now we can fold in the raw edge of that piece and make sure that we seal it with some hot glue, about a half an inch allowance. 
And at this point, we can fold it around our pillow and see exactly where the second piece of Velcro needs to go. And once you do that, you're just going to glue the Velcro to the back side. And that's our completed pillow. Now I just need to go and make the second one. And now when I need another black and white scheme for my porch, I can just change out the pillow bra to match the theme. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins.